Hello and a warm welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to take cuttings of the hardy perennial salvia. For this example we're going to be using the salvia nemorosa caradonna and this variety we have all the way running along this small narrow border and it is such a wonderful plant some of these shoots now are beginning to show signs of flowering so i'm going to show you now how i would take cuttings at this time of year to increase numbers of this beautiful plant this is one of the plants in the border and looking at it you can see that there is some nice flowering spires now starting to form on these but there are some further down that don't have the flowers produced yet so I'm going to start with taking these ones because these are going to be more ideal than having to sacrifice the flowers. I want to leave them on because we are looking forward to those. So I'm going right down into the middle and I'm going to be taking the cuttings just below where the leaf joint is. So on this one, I'm just going to go there. And then just while I'm just doing the rest, I'm just going to pop that into a plastic bag to make sure it doesn't lose any moisture. And I'm going to take some more. So I'm looking for a cutting about that kind of size. So maybe two, three kind of sets of leaves. And I'm cutting just below that leaf joint. And I'll just take one more from this one. So we're looking at that type of size into the bag to keep it from losing moisture and I've come to this other one now to get a few more so this one hasn't got any flowers farming so far so I'm just going to get one of these and just right underneath the leaf joint there and then rather than leaving that long stem on the plant I'm going to reduce that because that will then encourage these to produce side shoots which will give us double the amount of flowers and I'm going to do the same on this one so I'm going to go for that one there and into the bag and I just need to take this bag to where the pot of gritty compost is So I've got these cuttings inside this bag and I'm now just going to get them ready to be inserted into the compost. So this is just a terracotta pot filled with some gritty compost and the gritty compost is just a regular peat-free multi-purpose with added grit and the grit just helps it to drain more freely because when you're doing cuttings there is a tendency for them to rot if you don't have that sharp drainage and also if it is gritty it does tend to encourage the root formation so that's why we use gritty compost so on the cuttings i'm just going to reduce some of the leaf because with the leaves we don't want them to be transpiring and running out of moisture so we just take a bit of leaf off and i'm also going to take off the growing tip as well so that's the cutting that i'm looking at and i'm just going to insert that into some hormone rooting powder and just pop that along the edge of this pot so I'm removing the lower leaves I'm also going to remove the next set of leaves on this and also nipping out the growing tip so the growing tip nipping out bit is a way of encouraging the root growth what happens with plants is they have something called apical dominance and that just means they want to grow straight up. When we dip out the, the top, the growing tip, that prevents that apical dominance occurring and it then encourages the plant to produce some side shoots and also, if it's taken away like this in a cutting, it also encourages it to farm roots. So that's why we nip the, the tip out. Popping it right in there, a bit deeper. So I've got maybe is it four or five cottons here, 
which is perfect to be getting on with. So I'm just taking away those leaves, nipping out the growing tip and into the compost it goes. We then give that pot of water, so I'm just going to give it a water. So some people like, like to water the compost before they insert the cuttings in. I tend to like to water it after the cuttings get placed in, just to settle the cuttings in after they've been inserted. And then with the bag, we cover the whole thing And that will just retain the moisture and prevent these little cuttings from drying out. Okay, and then all we need to do with that is I'll just get a pen later on and just write on what these are. So that's the cuttings done. Once these have actually rooted themselves, you'll be able to look at the bottom of the pot and you'll see the roots starting to come through the bottom, the base. Don't take too much notice of the top growth the only indicator that I would advise is check the bottom. Once you see those white, white roots starting to come through the bottom, you know that the, the cuttings have rooted. So what we did was we took some cuttings earlier in the spring and we had those exactly the same as this, covered into a bag. And then not so long ago, we potted these up into their individual containers. So each one was given its own individual pot to grow further into. And these are some of the cuttings now, as they are. So these have been grown exactly the same method as what I've just shown you. And these are our lovely salvia cuttings. So as you can see, they do tend to want to bush out. This one itself has grown two new shoots. So these will actually be looking really, really good and growing on really, really well. So these are going to be saved as reserves. If you do follow our channel regular, you will know that some of these salvias we've had in this border for a couple of years died over the winter because the soil was just so wet with all the rain we've had. So these are going to be kept in pots. So I'll keep potting these on until they get to a nice size. And then we'll keep these as they are to act as reserves. So if we do get an issue with water logging again, like we did get last winter, these can then replace the plants in this border. Because what we had in the spring was, we lost all of our salvias and it, it was literally so many months of just heavy rainfall. And for some reason, this part of the garden, this particular bit of grass gets very, very waterlogged. It literally is like a bit of like a swamp. And all that water is then washing into this side border. So that's the reason why we lost them. Now, surprisingly enough, some of the other plants which also don't like to be too waterlogged. I've come through okay, things like the erysimum, the, the perennial wallflower, and also some of the eryngiums, so the sea hollies, they've actually been fine. But for some reason, the salvias ended up copping it, shall we say. So these are the reserves, if that ever happens again. So I'm gonna place this pot. This will go back into the summer house. If you don't have a summer house or anything like that you can pop it on your window ledge it does need to be somewhere bright but somewhere that's not in direct sun and just keep an eye on it when you do start to see the roots it's then time to be putting them out like we've done with these ones into their individual containers so i'm going to leave the video there i do hope you found it informative and also enjoyable please give me a like please subscribe and if you do have any comments about this please drop them in the comments box below the video. In the meantime, please do take care, enjoy your garden, 
and we will see you very very soon on the next one